one of the most beautiful and sought after aeroids in the plant trade, has confused botanists for over 150 years. A magnificent plant that takes many forms has caused even the most knowledgeable botanists in history to second guess themselves. Philodendron varicosum. The genus name Philodendron comes from the Greek words philo for love and dendron for tree, which loosely translates to tree hugger. Like most philodendrons, varicosum grows vertically up trees as a hemi epiphyte. The species name comes from the Latin varicosus for warty or rugged referring to the plant's unique wavy leaf margins. These plants can produce a spectacle of vibrant reds and deep velvet greens. The velvet front side of the leaf can more effectively capture light in the deep shade of the rainforests. It can vine its way along the forest floor or reach an imposing size when climbing a tree. Its native range spans from Central America to Southern Peru, from sea level to over 6,500 feet above sea level in the wettest tropical forests the world has to offer. And due to the species' wide range, it can vary in appearance quite a bit. To better understand this popular aeroid, we'll need to take a step back in time, all the way to 1856. German gardener and botanist Louis Matthew was the one who discovered and initially described this plant. But the description did not meet the publication standards to be considered valid. The original region of discovery is still unknown. The first valid publication would be made by Heinrich Wilhelm Schott in 1856. Over the decades, other species would be described, then reanalyzed, then reclassified as synonyms to varicosum, over and over and over again. 1871, Philodendron daguense. 1878, Philodendron carteri. 1879, Philodendron lindenii. 1905, Philodendron palatonense. 1925, Philodendron discolor. All of these publications have been used as names for this plant at some point in history. Even Pseudovaricosum was officially published in 2013. And that's an entirely different species. Well, for now at least. Another species once thought to be a variety of varicosum was Rubri juvenile. Rubri juvenile, which translates from Latin to red when juvenile, was described as recently as 2021, over 120 years since it was discovered. It was introduced to cultivation in 1898 under the name Triumphans, or SP Nove Choco Red. SP Nove, meaning new species, and Choco, referring to the region of Colombia in which it was discovered. A lack of research between similar looking species and ecotypes prevented Rubri juvenile from being given a proper name. That is, until it became one of the it plants of the short lived 21st century aeroid mania. There are numerous dazzling variants of this species across its distribution. Leaf color and design, petiole scale length and density, and even flower color varies across wild populations. The leaf underside, or abaxial, of some Peruvian populations have been documented to fade from deep red when juvenile 
to a light green when mature. Leaves of fully mature specimens found in the undercanopy of undisturbed Panama rainforests have been measured at 25 inches in width and 30 inches in length. Miniature varicosums, sometimes labeled as mini or dwarf, are clones that seem to stall at a smaller size, but are still reported to grow to large sizes if given enough time and the opportunity. The most attractive ecotypes are native to the northern and southern extremes of its range. A specific form of varicosum native to low and intermediate elevations of Panama, Western Colombia, and Ecuador is the most ubiquitous form you'll see on the market. This quote-unquote classic form was one of the earliest variants to be cultivated in Europe during the late 1800s. It typically has longer stem internodes, petioles covered in hair-like scales, and very distinctive leaves like paper with undulating margins. The scales along the petioles are thought to act as a barrier against herbivorous insects. As a houseplant, Varicosum is highly susceptible to mite infestations, but can be easily divided and restarted each season if defoliation occurs. Growing experience can vary depending on the hardiness of the clone, which tends to correlate to its origin's elevation. Nurseries often lump varicosum of varying origins under the same name, which leads to inconsistent growing experiences among plant collectors. Imported philodendrons often arrive with little to no viable roots. If they manage to survive, these plants can take months and even up to a year to recover. So consider these challenges before importing one. Overall, these plants are highly intolerant of drying out in between waterings. Short drought periods will cause older leaves to defoliate, and a more stressed out plant will become more vulnerable to spider mite outbreaks. I've personally grown many types of varicosum as a houseplant and find its hybrids to be much less fussy, especially Philodendron Majestic, which is hybridized with Philodendron Soderoi. While varicosum can grow quite large, I find it to be the easiest and most enjoyable to grow as a trailing plant, hanging elegantly over a decorative pot. Some forms and hybrids can even size up their leaves without the assistance of a moss pole. My personal Majestic hangs in low light and still pushes out 10 to 11 inch leaves. Varicosum is a peculiar one indeed. Frankly, you could collect 10 different types and have 10 completely different looking philodendrons but they're all still the same species. And now you know why this plant has continued to baffle botanists generation after generation. If you like this video, please interact with it. It lets me know if I'm making content you enjoy. Leave a comment letting me know your thoughts and please subscribe so we can get to 5,000 subscribers. This has been Jake, also known as Plant Gay for Life.